Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org, and I just got paired up playing a 15-2 game. Let's try d4. Wish my opponent have fun. No luck, though. No, no luck wishing. Alright, let's go with c4. Alright. Queen's Gambit declined. I'm going to hold off on declaring my knight, my king knight. Possibilities for both e2 and f3. Probably just the uh, bishop g5. And then e3. Favoring queenside development here, clearly. Let's go e3. Not a better spot for that pawn. And do I just go in for knight f3? Probably. Yeah. So, long term, I could be looking for uh, a minority attack, but I guess now with this move, black is heading for a trum... Uh, not, not a trumpovsky. What am I trying to say? Something with a T, I believe. <laughs> uh, yeah. B6. I'm forgetting the exact name here. Oh, Tartakower. That's it. Okay, well, I could probably go in for just a capture on D5 right now, now that they've uh, spent some time opening up a new door for the bishop. Notice had I captured one move sooner, the bishop could just come out along this diagonal. So maybe now is a moment where I could release the tension, in other words. Just capture on d5. That can't be so bad. With follow-up idea, bishop d3. I have to be careful, because... If I take on d5, I'm not sure which way white will, or uh, black will recapture, but if it's with the pawn, then I have some concern of some type of queenside majority. Um, I guess let's just start out with capture. Well, let's, let's consider once more. My other alternative is just to play bishop d3 or rook to c1. I'm I'm going to capture, and I want a little bit more clarity. Okay, so took with the knight. Now I have uh, no fear of, let's say, some queenside pawn roller. C5, C4. At the moment, there's tension between the bishops. Um, I could probably just go straight in for a capture right here. I am helping the queen to develop, but, hmm. You know, I may also, uh, if I capture the knight, this idea can still present, uh, it, it can still show up, this c5, c4 stuff. Bishop takes, queen takes, knight takes, pawn takes. c5 will be hitting soon. And I could saddle black with the hanging pawn structure. Hmm. What other candidate moves are there here? I don't have too many options, so let's just get this next move in. Do I capture the knight on d5 first? And then the bishop? Not so sure the move order matters here. Let's take the bishop. Let's see what black does. Is there any in-betweener? Okay, just the recapture. Pretty quiet position for sure. Played the opening a little faster than usual. <laughs> um, and another decision point here. I could take the knight, or I could play rook to c1. I don't know that I want to allow um, knight takes and then b takes. I mean, I could, I could do that. I think the computer would read 
you know, these two moves are around the same. My concern is that if I don't take the knight right now, this bishop will turn out to be a very strong piece. So, this is something that has my attention. Um, if I don't want this bishop to be a factor pointing at my kingside, I should take right now and make sure there's a fixed pawn on d5 blocking the bishop. Because I could be sure bishop b7 is hitting next for black if I play rook c1 or even bishop to d3. Hmm. Not sure what else to consider. Rook c1, knight takes knight, bishop d3. Hmm. I'm going to play it uh, very simple. Just take. And my only concern is some type of pawn roller, but I'll address that when it comes. Um, I could also probably take that into account, because if I'm playing bishop d3, there is always this concern of c4 hitting with tempo. If c5 happens, you know, the, the resulting structure is a hanging pawn structure, so black would probably like to have more pieces on board with the hanging pawn structure. So I'm welcome to, to uh, some exchanges. Uh, if black is doing nothing at all, I could just be castling and put both rooks on the C and D files to put pressure on these pawns. I have to be concerned about any kind of push, C4 or even D4. I'm pretty sure this has to happen. Just striking at my center. I've played a position before where the queen goes and gives check and I'm fine with just blocking and exchanging queens and taking with the king. Okay. I wonder... Mm, I'm considering knight to e5 just to welcome some more exchanges and also be in a position to offset this bishop in a way. Exert pressure on d5. Hmm. He could be kicked with f6, but maybe that's not such a bad move to, uh... I don't think I would be upset if my knight gets uh, kicked back. d3 is a fine... a fine square. Hmm. I'm gonna try for that. Um, also with this move, I'm basically saying that when c5 happens... I'm not going to be taking and saddling black with the hanging pawn structure. But, okay. We're not there, are we? So, my idea, it wasn't to support my knight, but rather to trade it. Very simple position. Um, I believe I am slightly better only because of my bishop. Uh, I believe I have the better bishop here. So I can't do without castles. Let's get this in. I'm one move away from completing development. It's probably reading as triple zeros. Okay. Well, I don't believe I'm going to have any issue with my opponent putting pressure on my pawns. I don't see any kind of target. Hmm. In a way, I could see after takes, takes the a5 pawn running down. One of, one of these two pawns could turn out to be a target. I think I should capture. Is there something better? I could play for a little trick here. <laughs> Rook to c1, and if they defend c5, I have this. Although, they could play f5. Um, I don't think I want to allow c4 here. Let's saddle black with the hanging pawn structure. 
And how about now, rook a, or just rook to c1, striking at the c5 pawn. Yeah, let's do this. And I might, I might actually do this. Yeah. Rook c8, f5. Okay, so the queen's stepping up. This gives up this square, so queen a4 is pretty appealing, must be said. She just rakes the whole fourth rank. Possibilities for queen a5 exerting pressure on both pawns. So, I'm just trying to figure out how to exactly organize my pieces. Uh, I may want to get on this diagonal before it's too late. That's the other thing. I don't think that they could prevent me from playing queen a4, but they could prevent me from playing bishop f3 by playing d4. You know, queen a4, d4 concerns me. Maybe the queen here in some type of coordinated attack against g2. So let's play bishop f3. And I anticipate, you know, at some point the, the bishops will be exchanged. They're playing very fast. I think that if they're not careful, they could really be under a, a lot of pressure soon. Like on queen... Queen a4. Queen a4 is getting pretty serious. Let's also bear in mind that their bishop's unprotected. Also, I need a flight square. Let's get queen a4 in there. See what they do. I'm expecting a5. I think that's the right approach. Primary reason behind it is to stop queen a5. So, let's see what black does. Uh, queen a5. That's another good one, I think. Hmm. Interesting. Time for a flight square? I think so. Um, the b-pawn is poison because of rook to b1. I get the bishop. Uh, also, I have to be on the lookout for queen b4 or a5 coupled with queen b4. And if I'm ever taking A takes B, then there's a target. Okay, they're going with the flight square as well. However, that's not the most reliable of flight squares. Probably get this guy working, huh? I think I want to be prepared to avoid the queen exchange on queen B4. Let's start with this. He's not doing anything. I might look for this kind of stuff, maybe even poke around at the king side. If I'm controlling this diagonal... They'll probably eventually have to play g6. Get a new flight square in there. Yeah. They continue to play very fast. Hmm. Queen on f4 is a pretty active piece. Should I look to just double up, though, against this guy? I think I'm going to try for that. Let's go here. Also rules out any queen takes b2 stuff. I'm not afraid of queen b4 in this position. If the pawn has to take like this, then, you know, he's... He's a bit more of a fixed pawn in a way. The likelihood that he could push is uh, not so great. Is black going to play d4 right now? This is maybe their first think of the game. Good to see. <laughs> well, on d4, I'm planning to first take the bishop and then... Okay, this still played pretty fast. I mean, might I just be winning a pawn here? Uh, bishop takes bishop. Let's let's consider. It's a, a moment to calculate for sure. I don't want to allow bishop takes bishop, so I don't think I have any other candidate move to consider. Let's take here first. So now I take. Uh, I think in the end my queen ends up on this square and I'm up a pawn. Takes, takes. I take here first. And then I take here. I don't know. I feel like I'm just winning a pawn here. 
but who cares what I what I feel? Let, let's see what I know here. Let me just work this out for sure. I believe I'm just winning a pawn. E takes, C takes. These guys are now off the board. I exchange a pair of rooks, and then I'm on this twice. There could be a check on C1. King H2 isn't an issue. I mean, my queen will be in the center. You can't argue with the queen in the center. Let's do it. We're going to take with the pawn for starters. Will it be with the rook or the pawn? Yeah, I guess we're just going to enter a position where... Yeah, I don't see anything great that they could do. Let's exchange rooks first. Yeah, a big moment here. I should probably take with the queen. And, I mean, I could take one of these two, but I definitely want to take out the uh, this guy here. He is passed, after all. Queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. I always have to be on the lookout. It'll be a tough one to convert, even though I'm, I'm soon to be up a pawn, and it'll be a tough one to convert. Get that full point. So many... Oh, okay. That is a bit surprising, I thought. Yeah, I thought going into a queen... queen-only endgame is best. So, just queen takes pawn. I'm improving my queen by doing that. Rook c2, king h2, if there's ever a queen check, I could be blocking on d6 at that point. Let's do it. I'm up a pawn, I have a very central queen, and there's still a rook on board. If I could exchange queens and obtain an active rook, let's say, on the a file, where I exert pressure on the pawn, and have this kind of structure. Okay. Probably just king h2. Yeah, king h2. And you know what? I think I'll be playing f4 if I'm checked. Yeah, I can't block with the rook. I'll be dropping my b-pawn. Yeah. Probably f4. Another thing is, by having a pawn on f4... For example, queen c7, if I block, queen takes, rook takes, rook c2 is tending towards a draw with this rook hitting everything. So if I can meet a queen check with f4, at least I won't have to worry about the rook hitting at my second rank with the strike against my f-pawn. Of course, I am uh, putting myself into a pin. Well, I'll have to be putting myself into a pin no matter what on a, a check against my king. So I think the best approach is with f4. If they try to strike away at the pinned pawn, queen here, f4, g5, they're probably asking for trouble. I could get the queens up with check, an immediate check, and uh, a check on a recapture, and then my rook gets really active. If I could get this pawn without one of these two pawns falling, it's almost certain win. 234, 25 moves in. Very simplified position. Okay, probably a 4. Let's do it. I maintain my queen position. I feel like I need to get the queens off in order to try to win this. And I'm maybe a step away from doing that. I would really like to have my pawn on b3. What would I do on rook c2? Would I get would go for that queen exchange? Okay, there is a check here. Let's consider these checks. Queen check first. Okay, hang on. That I mean, they're really asking for some trouble. Let's start with b3. Just getting out of the line of fire. Rook c2 is a good way to lose just to a basic fork. So I don't know if he's any... It's one of those situations where I don't know if the king is any safer on h7 than he is on g8. In a way, I feel like he's safer here. You know? 
I got I got some checks. So I'll probably have to do this. Okay, but now am I not able to slither on in there? Queen F6. Hmm. Queen F6 threatening rook here and then here. Is this going to be a problem? <laughs> well, what I could do... You know, I can't go here. I drop F4. This is an interesting move. Queen F6, Queen C5... You know what? I'm just going to play the move. Hmm. Rook f1 is interesting for white as well. Or for black. Putting pressure on f4. Hmm. How about, how about queen d6? Yeah, let's go queen d6. And I'm doing this to uh, get this kind of rook transfer. As mentioned, if I could establish this rook on a, a6, where I defend my pawn and I exert pressure here, I also have some 6th rank pressure. Also, it would be easier for me to play, taking into consideration my clock. If the queen goes too far, f7 is unprotected. Yep. Let's see. Let's see what black does. I'm uh, two moves away from that uh, quick rook transfer. Don't know that I want to do it right now. Okay. The queen is staying very active. Maybe looking for this stuff. Hmm. Well. I'm going to put pressure on this pawn, for starters. Threatening mate in two. No, not really. Queen would have to block. Yeah, so king here, I'm going to be giving a check. Get the queens off, and this is all I want. I'm not asking for much more. <laughs> yeah, if the king goes somewhere here, I could, uh, I'll be the one who gets at the king first. There isn't a good check for black. So I'm prepared to double on their 8th rank if they get too fancy. So let's see if I could convert this. Rook endgames. Oh, I didn't even consider that. Huh. Well, they are attacking my f4 pawn. They may revisit c3. I may have to go to d4. Yeah, central. Oh, brother. Hmm. How did I allow that? Um, that's not too cool. Let's go here. My king's going to be running. I'm doing this to offer a queen exchange and watch out for an ensuing queen e1. Hmm. <laughs> Can I dodge checks? My king be able to run all the way up here? I have these squares covered. The diagonal... I just have these two covered. My major pieces will cover that if my king ends up getting flushed up here. Uh, it's tense. Yeah, it's very, it's certainly very tense for me, for as long as the queens are on board. So queen b1, 
Um, I could go straight in for rook d7. Or uh, rook to d8. I think both would be good. I like rook d7 better. Yeah, I have all these squares covered if my king is on g3. This square covered. My pieces are controlling a lot of squares from ensuing checks when my king is on g3. Well, let's see what black does. Queen takes, pawn takes. When this rook hits here, he's threatening to take advantage of the pinned pawn with e6. Let's see. Less than six for my opponent. First time playing this guy. What other moves are there for black besides a rook h1 and queen b1? Queen b1, rook d7. They'll probably get mated. So, rook h1, it's either a queen exchange, rook h1, king g3. What's the follow-up? I'm playing, uh, I'm playing rook to d7 very soon. I have mating ideas of my own. This rook isn't really coordinated so well with the queen. Striking at h3, but... The squares where the queen and rook intersect, I don't really see them. Suppose rook h1, king g3, and queen g1. No. Hmm. That would definitely make me think. Hopefully they don't, they don't do that. <laughs> Didn't work that one out. I should probably get on that. Rook h1, king g3... Queen g1, there's queen h2. Could I just go, okay, let's, okay, oh, they're going for that. Okay, so I could exchange queens. But no. I'm going to go straight in for this. I could walk. I could walk. Yeah, I was tempted to take the queen, for sure. My king is just slipping out. Rook h1, king g3, I don't see a good follow-up check. h4, I just take. Yeah, this queen, I mean, I have a very central queen. In an open position like this, she's doing great, great things. Currently, I'm threatening mate in two. Here and then here. One way or the other. It's queen g5. Can't allow rook takes pawn, so they have to take my queen. I just recapture. I'll be winning one more pawn at least. They could insert a check first, king g3, and then exchange queens. Rook h1, king g3, h4, king takes pawn, g5. Mm, they might have to do something like rook takes h3. I could just take with the king. Queen h1, king g3. I got everything covered. All these squares are under my control. So, how are they ever giving check to my king when he's over here. Less than 10 for me. Under 3 for my opponent. And I think it's just lost for black. Only move for me. Well, there's no good uh, follow-up check. H4, king takes pawn. What more? 
have my own threats here. Not only mate, but even to exchange queens and pick up a pawn. Two connected pass pawns, two pawns up. Yeah, I don't believe there is anything. The more they think, the more, okay, more confident I'm getting here. Gotta save that A-pawn, but I think he's just going down. We'll take with check first, why not? And then we scoop up the A-pawn. Who cares about the E-pawn at this point? Yeah. I think it's silly to try to hang on to this guy. Let's just scoop, scoop him up. And... Let's get the king going. I, I, I was thinking about just hiding my king. I, I, I could have done that. They still have an active rook. Oh, brother. Nearly lost on time. Uh, I'm playing this poor. Oh, brother. <laughs> oh, good grief. I have to rewin this now. Oh, brother. That was so awful, what I just did there. I should have just put my king on h2. And then just walked with these guys. How I managed to lose a pawn over here. Okay, well, now I'm still up to two pawns. I'm okay with giving up one of these two pawns. I'll be there in time to get behind this guy. Very, very, very bad technique. Okay, let's just track that pawn down. They've gone check happy. I'll lose my A pawn. No skewers. Uh, I just want to get here. And just start pushing this guy. Create some space between these two. If the king ever moves, I keep pushing. And I finally have the coordination I would want. Ugh. I'm not happy with myself. You could hear it in my voice. I think there was a, an opportunity for black to maybe even draw. I'm seeing things. I thought the rook maybe went here to attack my rook. So I'm going to push my B-pawn as far as he can go. And then help out with my rook a little bit to push the pawn through. All right, let's defend. Stay out of the pawn's way. They're under 20. Alright, let's go here. Just duck for a moment. Push. And I'll be going to one of these two next. I don't care about my G-pawn at this stage. Right here. King to the C-file. And then push through. Maybe they resign here. Nope. Maybe we're playing on to checkmate. Less than 10. It's not a game I feel good about, must be said. Mm, not cool. 
Okay. Good game, good game. Let me... I want to... I feel like I just want to go to the end game real quick before anything. <laughs> uh, just to quickly show... Let's get the arrows off real quick. Just to quickly show another approach I could have taken. So silly to even drop a pawn like that. Um, at this point here, I don't need my king. <laughs> so I could just get on with pushing and pushing and just go here. And just to verify, I mean, these these two pawns and rook are, they could push through on their own. So it was unnecessary for my king to even feel like, I, I shouldn't have felt the need to try and activate my king. It's unnecessary when I have these two connected past pawns. Uh, was it a draw around here? Uh, yeah, it's... Well, now it's not a draw, but maybe there was some kind of drawing resource for black, but should have never got to that point. Just hide my king on h2. Just just start pushing my pawns right here. Okay, well, in the end, still got the W, but not a good feeling <laughs> when you, you don't convert uh, that ending well at all. All right, let's have a look at it. I feel like I could probably go straight into the analysis. Very quiet uh, game. A lot of simplification. You could see... Let's see. These are the master games. So this position has been seen before. These are some higher level games where this exact, exact position has popped up. As we could see, very draw-ish. <laughs> yeah, very simplified position. I think I just have a I don't know, it's my preference to play with the white pieces here and have something to strike at. Black just blundered upon. Maybe played a little bit too fast here with d4. Yeah. I just dropped a pawn. I think that's what the graph is going to confirm. I mean, it's just a, and a small advantage for me. And then as soon as they played d4, I have a I got a pawn, and I guess even, yeah, even when I messed up with the, the final position with the technique, I still have, I'm still the preferred side, but, yeah, maybe even some drawing possibilities for black. No, they just, uh, they just gifted me a pawn there. Let's have a look at it. Uh, there isn't any sharp position where I'm wondering, where this, was there a tactic missed? I don't think that's the kind of game we played here. Very quiet. Uh, Queen's Gambit declined Tartikauer, right? It says modern variation. Yeah. Let me put the arrows on. Hmm. What is it suggesting for black instead of d4? d4 gives me a pawn. That's what they played. So rook c7. Um, I guess I want to look at this, because I was, I was mentioning I wasn't so fearful of, let's say, you know, queen b4. This may drop a pawn as well, but, you know, just to highlight, there is no possibility really ever for d4. My bishop's the more secure of the two. I'm putting pressure. I have an aggressive bishop there in a defensive post, and, yeah. I could take up a, a spot on d4. And I guess I could go straight in for winning a, a pawn as well, huh? Not quite. Rook d4. a5, and now it wants to take. Mm. Feels like it's still tending towards a draw if I go in for this. You know, something like this. These guys will be exchanged most likely, and then it's a 4 versus 3. Don't know if I'm really in favor of that. 
Um, right around this point, if something like that happened, I'd be more inclined to take over control of the C file and then do something like this. Get my king up on the D4 square. Um, I don't want to enter a rook ending like that where it's where, where the extra pawn I have is just on the king side. You know, four versus three, that's not it's not cool with me at all. I mean, it's going to be very, very difficult to win that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't see myself winning that. But my point here is that I, I, I wasn't fearful of this queen b4 move if they're having to recapture with the c pawn. But if they have a5 in, and I don't know, let me just kind of make a, a nothing move. And now they're playing this. This is a different story. Queen takes, pawn takes. And now I'm having to work against three, three pawns here. Yeah, notice the evaluation here. It's already preferring black some. It's b3. You know, this is this is something they could be putting pressure on. Notice also with these pawns further advanced, their king is able to find it easier to play a constructive role in the end game much sooner than me. Um, you know, if the king gets up here and let's say one rook is exchanged, I think he could be quite comfortable on d6. With still a couple rooks on board, maybe would be, I would feel at least a little bit uneasy if the black tr if the black king tries to take up a post on d6 with two rooks on board. But yeah, main point here: I'm not fearing queen b4. I know this is that this is I an idea, but I'm not fearing it until. There's a pawn on a4, a5 supporting the b4 square. Um, I'm not sure what more to really cover in this one. Very quiet. I'm up a pawn. Don't believe anything was missed. Check. It does like f4. a5, no, king there. Just popped up for a second, king g3. Okay, b3. Yeah, I th believe I was able to voice everything I wanted to during the game about how uh, I'm, I'm just looking for a quick uh, rook transfer. Maybe I could just put that on the board to show. Like right here. Instead of queen c3, suppose they go in for an exchange. I mean, as it played out, I took their f pawn and then their a pawn, and I'm up two clear pawns. And I converted it poorly, as you saw. But suppose they go straight in for a queen exchange at this point and then play rook c2. I'm playing rook a6, and he's just a super piece. You know, he satisfies a defensive role. He's active and defensive piece. So there's this, and then I could kind of, well, I could slowly advance some. Um, b4, b5, a4. My king could come over to assist. This rook is excellent. Yeah, I really can't say enough about a rook on this square. Ties down the rook to defense, defends my base point, and cuts off the king. He doesn't have an easy time, you know, maybe going towards the center. Not that he would want to go towards the center, but he kind of has to walk a tightrope like this. And meanwhile, maybe I could be making some headway in this direction. A really strong post. I, have a black, I would have black in a restricted position. And I could, uh, I think it popped up g4 at one point. I'd be a little hesitant to do that uh, just yet. You know, they might start uh, giving a bunch of checks to my king like it happened in the game when my king tried to get active, but could get my king in position. Let's say king here. And it just creep over a little bit. And it even suggests this, and we're seeing the influence that the rook has on the 6th rank. If he ever pushes, I'm winning the h-pawn. And if he ever comes over here, I'm really quick to just get back over there, and it's the same story. If there's a take, double isolated pawns, and now I have a pass pawn to work with. It's just a super piece. It'd be really, really tough, I believe, for black to hold this if they went in for a queen exchange because of this idea to transfer my rook to the A-file. 
and B3 ha playing B3 has that very idea in mind because if I'm playing this right now queen takes rook takes now there's rook here and it's a much different story here rook takes rook takes and this is tending towards a draw as soon as I play here the rook gets behind and this is uh, this will be a drawn end game. I won't be able to make progress here with the rook being stuck. It'd be different if the the rules were were reversed. If I had the rook, if my rook was on a2 and their rook was on a7 in a defensive position, then I could keep pushing. But uh, yeah, not the story in this in this end game. Uh, anything else missed? I don't think so. H5, rook d7. Yeah, it's just lost here. So instead of h5, I guess they had to try rook e1. And then exchange queens, huh? Rook takes. Oh, well, I still kind of, I, I certainly like my position here. Um, I'm still trying for something. Uh, but what more to add? Oh, it's that if the rook ever moves from this square, then I have that one moment to make that transfer. And it's suggesting that I could just improve my king. I have my base points covered. Okay, f4 might fall at some stage. But I think I could kind of do something like this. You know, just head over towards the queen side. My rook defends both base points. He cuts off the king from maybe trying to help out towards the queen side. Yeah, this would this would be the approach. Uh, I believe I would be taking that approach, just improving my king position. They played uh, rook to e1, exchange queens, and then improve the king. They played h5, and then it's gone. Yeah, there isn't anything against my king. I have everything covered, as I mentioned during the game. h4, I just take. g5, I could just take with the king or even the pawn. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> anything but the pawn <laughs> anything but the pawn there please you don't want to drop your queen oh how awful would that have been king takes is fine f6 f6 is illegal <laughs> I should probably wrap this one up <laughs> oh okay yeah these weren't amounting to anything short story these h pawn moves my king was secure enough and I was there in time. Put pressure on black. Okay. Quiet game. Uh, opponent gifted me a pawn. And I converted it. Mm, but not so well in that end game. Uh, again, I could have just uh, tucked my king away. <laughs> I didn't need my king. Just put him on h2. And it may come at a snail's pace. But uh, I could just kind of do it like this. You know, if there's ever a rook exchange, it's one king and pawn ending. So this would be the approach. It takes forever, but I have I have forever to get these pawns rolling. Okay, well, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. And I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.